Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we are gonna reassemble our HIF 44, so stay tuned. Now, I did not think that I was gonna get this other video out this month, but here we are. We are gonna reassemble the HIF 44 carburetor today. I got it all cleaned. I used an ultrasonic cleaner. I picked this up from a local hardware store called Harbor Freight. It's kind of like a cheap, inexpensive tools, which I would argue are pretty disposable. Um, however, this one works pretty great. You use a solution and you get in there and it cleans it. It's really easy. It's and you can actually use it to clean things like jewelry or all sorts of little small metal parts with various different kinds of solution. And the nice thing is, is it's like not aggressive. It gets into the, all the nooks and crannies because really the water will get into all the crevices and then it will, uh, and then it uses ultrasonic waves to kind of cavitate the water. It works really well when it's hot and then it knocks all the dirt off. So when you have the solution mixed with hot water, it really does a great job. As you can see here, the carburetor is looking really good. It's kind of dark in here, but um, you get the idea. All the dirt and grime is off of it, and all that's left is the bare aluminum, which is cool. But for those of you who didn't see the first episode, you can see that. It should be popping up in the corner here. You can start with that. That talks about how I disassemble this. But before I get started, remember this video is actually probably going to drop right when I am in South Africa. I'm already there if you're watching this. And so with that, don't forget, there won't be any videos for the remainder of the month. The next video will be a travel vlog, you know, related to me going to South Africa for the first time and really get into that part of the world for the first time. And then we'll get back into this, testing it in comparison to the HS2 and all sorts of really cool stuff. But let's jump over to the bench and we'll put this sucker back together. Okay, so with all of our parts clean, the next step is to reassemble this stuff and, uh, and really get a working carburetor back together because right now that is not working. So the first thing I wanna start with is our throttle flapper here. Um, this is called a butterfly from what I've been told by one of my viewers, um, but I'm gonna keep calling it a flapper because I think it's funny. And we're gonna do, we're gonna put this in. We need our little shaft here and this is gonna slide into, and this is gonna slide into this hole right here nice and easy just like that all the way through you can see here there's actually a hole like a, a, a slice of this brass thing out and this actually is going to slide right down into that hole and with that you'll line up the holes and you'll be able to screw the sucker back in. Um, there's kind of like only one way that this will go in here uh, so don't fret too much you just need to line up those holes and get it screwed in. Also, the screws that it uses are the ones that have a small cutout in the bottom of them. Um, I think that help, I think that the, it like expands as you screw it in. I'm not really certain on that, but just make sure you use these two screws to unscrew this in. All right, and there we go. We've got our throttle flapper back in, looking pretty good, just like that. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is reinstall our choke piston assembly thingies. The way that this works is you have a small retainer, looks like this, it has a small rubber O-ring on it, and then we have a little plunger. The plunger comes in from the bottom, slides up in there, and then this needs to go on here, but you need a paper washer. That paper washer here, or a gasket, I don't know why I'm calling it a paper washer, needs to go in, this kind of slides down, wiggles its way on there, and then you're gonna take your retaining screws, you're gonna go ahead and screw those into the carb assembly and get this really nice and, and tight. Um, you don't wanna tighten the hell out of these things because remember, it is the, the carburetor is made out of aluminum, which is a soft metal, so it does have a tendency to strip if you try and over torque these. Remember, this just needs to be held on there tight, but not like gorilla tight, you know. The next thing you're going to put on is a small rubber gasket here with the tapered end facing down. I'm going to go ahead and slide that on and over. And then we have our metal retainer here that goes on as well. And now we have a really nice, and now we have a nice tidied up choke assembly uh, installed there. So now the next thing we have here 
is our actual choke actuator. So this has a flat spot right here, and that's gonna go on over your screw right here. But before you put that on, you need to put your spring on. And the way that I understand this is you have to actually coil this up a little bit. So you have your straight end and a bent end on here, and this needs to go on. It fits into a little groove right down there. And then I think you need to kind of coil this back so that the, so that the, the whole leaf butterfly assembly will actually do its job. Now, it's a little bit hard to see, but basically I started with the flat end of the spring on this end right here. You can see it kind of notched in. And then I slid the spring down and you kind of actually have to coil it around yourself. So you're like tightening the spring. I think it sits right behind this right here. I don't think it needs to go all the way to the other end over here. Um, the spring tension on that feels pretty good. Um, and as you can see, it's stopping and starting where it needs to. Um, the last thing I wanna do is just make sure that it's nice and tight. And once it's tight, and once it's tight and there's no binding, we should be in good shape. You can see the spring here is free and not like impacting anything. And that's important because you don't want the spring to fall under that metal washer. Otherwise this will bind up and it won't seal and it won't work properly. So once that's good and nice and tight, the last thing you wanna do is pull up the two lock tabs that are on the other side of the screw here. All right, and so those lock tabs are now installed and we have a choke, which is great. So the next step I think is gonna be installing this side of the throttle. So let's go ahead and get that on. Okay, so next up we're gonna reassemble our throttle. Now this can be a little confusing, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take one of these rubber washers. That's gonna slide down right around the edge of this thing here. Um, this is important, it needs to seal properly down here. Um, so slide that down and a 10 millimeter socket does a really great job of kind of pushing that seal down in there um, and, and making it seal up nice and tight. For this portion here, you are going to first install your spring. Notice how there's this small coil on this and then this long piece. Uh, set the long piece down right up here and then what you're gonna do is coil this around. You're gonna wanna bring this around and notch it right behind this right here. So bring it around just like that. Then we have our actual throttle piece here. This is probably gonna be easiest if you get a set of needle nose pliers here. Because you're gonna have to kinda work with this here and spring tension is always fun. All right, so that part is hard. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself on that one. This, this little notch, this little piece of the spring has to, come all, has to come all the way around and click into this when this one is sitting right up here on the top. Now, that's pretty difficult. I did my best to show that to you guys, but, but unfortunately, it's just tough when you're, uh, when you're trying to get this all lined up. Now, the next thing, of course, is the actual throttle here. And uh, the way that this goes on is just like that, as you can see. The throttle like leaf needs to sit forward with this sitting down towards the back. Um, we're gonna tighten that sucker down here. Um, don't forget you are gonna need one of your locking washers to go on here. So it'll go on just like that. And then get one of our nuts and tighten it down here. And so I'm not gonna lock these up just yet, but uh, you do need to come back and send these lock tabs up. I'm gonna rotate this around, but just so you can see how this works, your choke is now gonna be able to hit this little screw that's sitting inside your throttle, and that is gonna open up the throttle a little bit when you actuate your choke. The choke is doing some stuff internally as well, but it opens up the throttle a little bit as well. So now we can flip this over and we're gonna put the other side back together. Now just like the other side, you do need to put a rubber seal back onto this side of the, uh, of the throttle actuator here. 
kind of work that on there. I want to be a little stubborn, but that's okay. And then, like I said, a 10 millimeter socket should send that sucker right down to the bottom. All right, and so this next part, this one actually feels a little bit more self-explanatory. This spring goes on as such. Got the smaller curly cue on the top. That's gonna go down. And notice the bottom of the spring is notching right back here. And then you have your little hook here. This needs to hook on to this spring. Now, this doesn't have to be coiled around a million times. Basically, what you're gonna do is take the notch on this, it hooks onto the top part of the spring, and it's gonna ultimately come around and meet it so that it sits down like this. So, let's put this on, I'll show you what I mean. Now, I've kinda set that up in there, and let's tighten it down with a new washer. So, let's loosen this up just a little bit and make sure that our throttle works. That's feeling real good. Throttle opens and closes just the way it needs to. So the last thing we're gonna do is knock up these lock tabs. I'm not really gonna show you that. You guys know how that works. Okay, so now that we have that assembled, it's time to get back into the bottom end of our carburetor here. And this part is not too difficult. The, the hardest part really was the throttle linkages. Getting this stuff back in order is, is much easier in my opinion. The first thing you're gonna wanna install here is your little brass fitting. Don't forget the filter on this. This is really important and it's gonna make your carburetor's life last a lot longer. Um, just don't forget that before you set that back in here. The process is pretty straightforward. You simply tighten this down into this hole here. Make sure that you start threading it with your hand first. Um, this is something that you don't wanna strip and is pretty easy to strip. All right, so that's nice and tight in there. The next thing that we're gonna install is our float needle. Now, the way that this works is you have a little tapered needle and the needle goes down inside this little brass fitting and it allows fuel in and out as the float goes up and down. So that goes in there just like that. So the next thing that we're gonna put in is our float. And so the float actually will sit in the chamber just like this, but it needs a post to run through the side here and hold it in. So we have that post right here, pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. And when you're putting this on, don't forget the new washer that comes with the kit, but let's set this down in here. And now when you tighten this, you're just gonna wanna take care not to flip the whole chamber over because if you do, you might end up losing that float needle and then you're gonna have to take this back out. So just like that, looking good. All right, so next up is your jet, and your jet will sit inside this little arm here. Um, there's a small notch in here to set, to, to kind of set this in the way that it needs to go in, but it's gonna slide down into that chamber there. And you're gonna take the screw that has a small spring on it, put that back on, and then this is gonna tighten down right here. All right, and with that tight there, that actually wraps up this part of your fueling system. You can see the float goes up and down. You're not gonna wanna push too hard on that. Um, and then you have your center jet. This is where the fuel's going in and up into your carburetor and your whole engine. Um, this gets held on. And then last, you're gonna have the cover that goes on the bottom. Now keep in mind, there is a new rubber seal that comes with this kit. You 100% want to make sure that you replace that because, well, this is a really common place for it to leak. Now you can see here, the chamber is actually billowed a little bit so that you can, so that your float can actually actuate in there. All right, and we've got a nice clean seal there. The next thing that we're gonna put back in is our fuel adjustment screw. That just goes in the side here. Keep in mind that it is this screw right here with a very tiny tip on it. Don't forget to replace the rubber O-ring on this as well. Also keep in mind, while I screw this in here, by screwing this in, you are making, you are making your mixture richer. If I remember correctly, um, it's, it's hard for me to remember when I've been flipping it up, up and down and stuff over and over, but when you screw it in, it's actually gonna be lowering or raising that jet. So you can actually see it's going up and down right now. It's, 
maybe you can see that. I don't know, that's kind of kind of small in there. So I'm gonna kind of get it down just a little bit. Um, this is gonna need to be adjusted once you put it on your car, so don't fuss too much with it right now. We've got that, so we've got our adjustment screw in. We've got our full SU assembly on. So really all that's left is installing our dash pot, which will ultimately get uh, it filled with oil, but for right now, I'm not gonna add any oil. This is really focusing only on the reassembly of this carb. You're gonna go ahead and feed the needle on this down into your actual carburetor here into the jet um, go easy with this you don't want to force it in there you're just going to kind of want to wiggle it down in there you can kind of look at it from the from the side here if you're having trouble seeing it now i find it's easiest to look at this from the side here notice where the notch is it's very important because it won't slide down where it needs to go without that notch in place and then we're going to have to line up these holes here so you might have to come out just a little Rotate this around until all those holes line up, just like that. And we're gonna reinstall our three dash pot screws right on the top here. All right, and so there we have it. We have a fully reassembled carb here. Let's zoom out and talk about the parts that are still left on the table and why they are still left. Now, as you can see, we have the throttle working, looking real good opening and closing, choke, dash pot. The, the float inside, as you can see, is moving up and down with literally no force. This is exactly what we want. If it has any sort of binding, anything like that, you need to take this back apart and make sure that jet is in a good place. However, with that floating needle, it does kind of help with this. Um, and as you can see, that is working properly. The last thing I do want to reinstall is our dash pot uh, oil plunger here. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and re reinstall that, tighten it back down. Ultimately, we will need to ultimately we will need to fill this with oil, but I'm going to talk about that and kind of the whole tuning process once we get into the actual installation of this carb. I do want to mention a few things. I have identified everything here. So this right here is made for the gases that are coming out of your crankcase or out of your transfer case that go through a PCV and then ultimately go into this hole here. Um, there is a hole on the manifold as well that can be used for that. Um, but this right here, I am like 90% certain because it's a full pass through straight into the intake is used for that and recleaning those gases. This hole right here, this is for fuel. Fuel actually is gonna go into this feed right here and then it's gonna fill up that float chamber. Fill it up until it is not receiving fuel anymore. Now, right here, there's a small vacuum advance line. This is made to go to a distributor and uh, give you some sort of vacuum advance feed. Um, and then on the other side, this hole right here is an overflow for fuel. In my case, and hopefully your case, you won't ever have any fuel overflowing out of that. So pretty exciting stuff, glad this is done. Um, set that down here. All right, so that wraps up this episode of Classic Mini DIY. I hope you guys found it helpful. It was really fun diving into this little carburetor here and uh, getting everything all clean and tidy. I'm eager to see how it performs on the car to see if it really uh, improves the performance at all or if it was all kind of just for nothing. And maybe if it is, this'll end up on the eBay store. So one way or the other, there's gonna be some carbs on my eBay store coming soon. But on part three of this little mini series, I am gonna install this. We're gonna install this manifold get everything hosed up, get everything hosed up to this, and then we'll see how this thing performs on the car. But until that episode, thank you so much for watching the channel. Thank you so much to 7 Mini Parts for sponsoring the channel. The SU Carb Kits that I'm using on the channel can actually be found in links below. Head over there, pick up some stuff for you from 7 Mini Parts and help support the channel at the same time. But until the next episode, and until I see you guys again, enjoy those minis and motor on.